The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. All right, folks, let me just uh, finish this up right here. I'm trying to get a left side, right side. Price time, actually. We don't know if that's going to work, but I just wanted to see if there's any chance in a measured move. So let me go to that level. It'll take a little while. There could still be a bounce first. I suspect there's going to be a bounce. And we'll move this over to the right. Hey, I can't go all the way. So that says it about... Uh, then let me just do this 10.17 at about 10.23. The 200 period exponential moving average of 41.67 might be hit. Uh, we'll just watch this closely. This is the E mini one minute chart. We made a peak GSAC, a little mini top right here. And the uh, leg E is going to a peak E in the uh, five minute chart and a peak D. No, a leg D, we don't know if it's a peak D yet in the. <clears throat> 10 minute chart. I just wanted to explain some of these things. Yeah, this is what I'm looking at. Remember, on Friday, we were looking at a failure pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. That said to me, so this is Monday, the 30th of October, just about to wrap up the month. And what we're looking at here is that that dreaded H pattern. All right, I can show these because we've had a number of people over the last couple of days say, I want to know about my newsletter and. Uh, I said I'll go through some things on on a Monday. So let me just show you this. So all right, I look at three core patterns. There are plenty of patterns I look at, but the three core ones are straight line up, straight line down. That's one. Two is a cup formation. Three is an arch formation or a mix of one and two or one and three. One and three is where you make an arch pattern. Usually you're fed at a peak A or a B. Take out the left side low. And then you've got to be careful because you have three bars, two, but maybe three bars in which to close above the left side uh, low. This is 32,846 for the Dow. This is the third session below it, but the the the, the day hasn't even begun in 35, 36 minutes. Nothing. So we have to wait for the full day to see whether or not we close at 32,847. That'll be a good. That'll be important because what it's done is it says. That now there's a less of a chance of going one to one to the downside from the high that was made. And that was in the 34,000. That would be a huge move down. So that's number one. Number two is within the context of the arch formation. Look at this. I'm going to go through each one of these. So S&P. Uh, why am I going bling, bling, bling on my earphone? Uh, oh, because I did something wrong. Okay. okay, there it is. Look, here we go. So the S&P. With that arch formation going to that 42, 16.45, a low of about the October, the, the beginning of October, we went way under it. And this is the, in this particular instance, I'm going to exclude that down. I'm going to say from the sharp move down, one, two, three. This is the fourth session that is below 42.16. It's a little tough to get to 42.16. We, we might see it, but it's going to be tough. QQQ. Arch formation, we call it the dreaded H, that red uh, straight line down, then the arch formation, take out the left side low because it could go a lot lower. Well, in the QQQ, we're one, two, three, four bars under 351.36, which was made all the way back in uh, late September. So, and now I just wanted to show you because of the weekly charge. Remember, we waited and waited all of last week to see whether the QQQs would follow the NQ uh, futures that the week before had already closed negative in the 914 under the, uh, it went pink three weeks, three, uh, two Fridays ago, three weeks ago. And, uh, but the Qs only did that last week. And now we are still S. And that's just saying to me, this rally could unfold in a very um, mixed market way. For instance, there's still some strength in the QQQs, even though it's gone negative with the 9P moving average. The MACD is very weak. Stochastic's down at 18%. On balance volumes holding okay, but kind of weak. Um, but you haven't got a, a, a wide disparity between the 9 and the 14. When that expands, 
then the price goes much, much lower or much, much higher. So it hasn't expanded yet. Have a look at the um, IWM. It did this ages ago. IWM, uh, 162.90, uh, down uh, up 68 uh, cents. It made that dreaded H at a peak, A minus. It couldn't even get to a B uh, way back in early October. And it's been down every almost every single day since. It's looking terrible. And you've got this very long support. Oh, my God. I, I spoke about this Friday. I couldn't believe it when I looked. I'd almost forgotten about it. This huge rectangle that I drew in going back to June of 2022 at 162.70. It ran all the way to the 190, 198 area, pulled back to 162.50, a lower low. And that became a trend line. It ran up to 199.26, and then it pulled back again. Took time. It didn't get to, it went to about the 168 area, then rallied sharply to 198. So you've got three highs that were made in the 198, 199 area. Now it comes down. And what does it, what does it do on Friday? <clears throat> I forgot to type this in. It goes to, didn't it take it out by a couple of cents? No, it held it by, no, it took it out. 161.67 was the low on Friday. Eight cents. It went seven, seven, eight cents lower than the June uh, low of 2022. This is tough. I mean, this is the IWM Russell 2000. It is not holding very well. Well, this is a really critical level. Fine. With that said, there are a couple of things that are going on. Look at the SMHs. The SMHs today are up uh, just slightly, up about seven cents at 138.41. I've said for forever now that just the way I look at the markets. The SMH is, that's the bellwether. That, where, the, where the semis are going, because the semis are the, are the crude oil of the 19, 1900s and the 2000s, but the chips are, in fact, this is where everything is, right? But I, I don't think you can even make the chips without the crude oil. But the fact is, this is the new energy focus for everything to do with computers or anything to do with mobility um, in a different way. And when I say mobility, I mean EVs. And that's this is the big change. Um, and yet you still need electricity to get the EVs. So this is a fascinating period. But in the meantime, the, the um, semiconductors, and I should mention that we're still short, just like we short the Dow from August the 1st, we hold that position. We're short the Semis, the all-time high was 161.17, and that, and that was um, late, late July. Where was it? Let me tell you. It was in – oh, that's right. August the 1st, we went short the Dow. August the 2nd, we went short the, uh, before the opening uh, of the uh, market on the 2nd, and that was two, about two points off the all-time high, and we remain in that position. And one of the reasons is – I don't see anything yet. I, I must tell you, I, I came to, to the United States from South Africa. The parallels between South Africa and the United States, I've always marveled, uh, even when it goes back to gold. Uh, what was it, the 18, 1850s, really, the gold, gold era where everyone was going over to California to mine for gold. Well, South Africa has the same kind of history. Um, so I came here some time ago, and... Um if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, just, I don't want to waste time with that stuff. Whatever I say is not going to change anything. But what I did want to say is that there, I've always believed that people are people. Um, it doesn't matter what ethnic religion and what, uh, where you come from, within Within that group, you'll always find good people, bad people, really nice people, and people you just don't want to associate with. It's just the way it is. And um, coming from when I, I was born in Cape Town, South Africa, it's a beautiful place, a lovely place. And uh, then my family moved to um, a little mining town near Johannesburg. And... Um, I got beaten up, uh, not every single day, but a lot, for being of an ethnic group and being um, a white South African with the Afrikaners, a white English-speaking South African with the Afrikaners spoke Afrikaans, and uh, the Afrikaners were very anti, the blacks as well. And it was just um, really... Um, It was a very unfortunate situation. And I found very quickly that I could make friends with people of any any ethnic group um, by just embracing them and respecting them. And that's just the way it should be. And uh, when you meet bullies, you have to confront a bully and you might be, be you might be beaten up, but you, you, you really have to land a punch that uh, gets respect. I don't know why it is. I don't know what, what, what it's for, but that's the only way you get respect, and it's a very unfortunate thing. So that's that. Um, and I have to mention this only because it's getting to be a situation in the United States that I I always thought it would happen, but I never thought it would happen uh, as quickly as it has. So with that said, Dow's up 252 points at 32,674. The um, E-mini is trying to rally, and as I said, I thought that there was a chance we might have made the intraday high. We never know, but we might have made the intraday high. Uh, I keep going to the wrong chart. It's over here. Yeah, yeah, right there where I went to the G slash C, an E in the in the five minute chart, and a D in the uh, ten minute chart, and. Uh, 
actually did get showed right there while we were on air, but I also put in the stop uh, a little too close there and got out. And now I haven't been able to get back in from the 4175 level. Yeah, we are at 4162. That happens. Um, so I want to get to certain things. So far is the stock we had recently, but then it just didn't act right. And I thought it's the electronic, it's in the banking area. It's just, it might be something different to your usual banking area. So today, uh, early, and I watched it Friday, it didn't do too badly. And oops, I'm in the wrong, uh, I need the uh, daily chart. So far. Yeah, so it didn't do too badly on Friday, but the whole financials, this is what really worries me. The financials are just failing, failing, failing. And here we got the SoFi up 17 cents, but it had earnings and they were quite good. It went to $7.88 and now it's down to 7.04. And one of the things I'm looking at is, I don't care what happens intraday to the stocks with the good news, it happens over a period of maybe two days, like IBM comes out with what is it? Great, really a very surprising. Oops, I typed it in over there. Very surprising earnings. Wasn't so much to us. I was expecting, I mean, talking about IBM as a turnaround candidate for ages and it's holding. So we're going to have to look at Microsoft. You know, look at Microsoft. Um, it isn't breaking up, it isn't breaking down, it's up five dollars at 335 today, but it is stalling at the high level, but it is holding. So what happens to these stocks after the earnings, especially the ones with a with better earning? What happened to Amazon? Amazon is probably still up nicely. Yep, it's up 270 at 130.43, had a very nice upside gap on Friday. This is what you want to see, actually, I was saying that uh, recently, uh, what I, what I like to see is if you're fortunate enough, and I spoke about this last week, if you're fortunate enough to be in a stock that has takeover aspects, like an X, U.S. Steel, and you can survive all the way through a, a determined down move in the market, that is really nice. That's what you want to see because you, you, it's like bonds used to be. Market goes down, you're holding bonds, it saves you. 987, bonds saved you. Oh, 2007, bonds saved you. They're not doing that now. Since the high that was made uh, back in January of 2022, all those highs in the market, now we've come down, but the bonds are not saving you. There's been a change. That multi-decade era, I, I used to consider it to be the Japanization of U.S. bond yields, gone. Gone, gone, gone. So now what we're looking at is the TLT. Look at this move. It looks, this looks like a stock. It doesn't look like a bond. 179 in March of 2020, trading now at 83, 83 more than cut in half. And that's what happens every once in a while. Every once in every couple of many decades, you get this where bonds really take a, take a beating, just as on the upside, they've had the most spectacular rally. So this is just saying to me that the, the longer term trend has changed. Now, let's just get back to what we were looking at. So what I'd said is gold, which is still up very nicely, up 11, made a leg C on Friday. Uh, should go to a D because the MACD is good. Uh, stochastic is holding flat at 90%. That's what you want to see. On balance volume says it's just a tad overbought, um, holding in the weekly chart now for the third week, up near the uh, 2000 level. It's at 2010 up 12. But what I am fascinated about, about is if gold holds, and you know, gold is the, the go-to icon of geopolitical fear, just as the dollar is the, the dollar is the respect, the international currency of respect. So you've got gold as the currency of fear. Well, in this particular regard, what we're looking at is silver always plays catch up. Yep, and today it's playing big catch up, up um, 59 sets at 23.48. But if you look, I like to go to ASA. We don't often have it in, in my for subscribers to my opening call, but it's something I always follow South Africa and the five, I think, gold, gold stocks from South Africa. They're in a portfolio. Uh, it's registered, I think, in Bermuda. Um, and it's up eight cents at 13.81. This is not, look at this weekly chart. This is not what you'd expect with an international conflagration going on. 
especially in the Middle East, because that's where gold would automatically start to skyrocket. So something something's not right. I mean, I always pick out this one. This one that we often grab, NG is Nova Gold, because it's very low priced, and basically it's going to move up. Uh, the, if the tide moves up, it'll move up with the tide, but you get a nice percentage move from 368 to whatever it is. The reason I was four, but it's not doing very much. Look at RGLD, RGLD. Let's look at that. This is Royal Gold. Don't tell me this is a major bull market for gold. Now, gold, gold holding should, there's no way that you can't start to see uh, an improvement in the gold stocks. I, I shouldn't say there's no way, but I'd be, it's hard pressed for those gold stocks at some point not to start moving, saying, hey, if gold is staying there, we're going to be moving up to be getting better prices. But I do think that this is more an emotional response to what I call the geopolitical fear factor than anything else. And it's fascinating that it's happening. I'll be back. Basil Chapel, Tiger Conditions Hour, Dow's up 249. We'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I will just uh, finish this up here. Yeah, look, we've got the E mini one minute chart all the way at uh, leg F, could be an F alternate count, F slash B. But in the meantime, we're calling it an F because still got over G. And in the five minute chart, that is a peak E. So I put in a little a carrot because I've already used up the down arrow because it did go pink and then it go green in the nine period moving average. And then the stochastic went under 80% very quickly. And now it's pulling back under the 200 period moving average, which is like a magnet for 41.60. 
in the uh, five minute chart, the 10 minute chart, I have to take that plus away. Remember, in the chart wave methodology, the idea is to always be on the right side of the notations. Uh, in other words, you want the notations to be as correct as possible, and that means you have to go back and fix something. If it was wrong, you have to get it right because you want to. In other words, the tailwind behind you um, has to be to your benefit. Otherwise, you're not going to get any benefits. If you get the wrong notation, uh, you can be you could be misreading it. In this particular case, that carrot says, "Whoa!" This upside down uh, V says, "That's that's your second down arrow." And now you should see a sharp pullback, which you have. And you've got the 10-minute um, chart at a peak D. This is the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. Not in one move, but it's one, one look floating there. It goes, this would be a gray A, gray A. As soon as it goes past the G slash C, it goes to D. Now it becomes D, floating letter, floating letter, floating. Boom, peak D, because you had a lower high. So all of a sudden, now you've got that. And the question came in. Um, UVXY, we're looking at it, and I just said, you got to hold off well. Um, when I hit that sell button for the uh, S&P, that was probably where the UVXY, now let's have the UVXY. It's just a little duff because there is so much, um, there is so much anxiety in the market that this short covering rally as I said, at what was it, just about 10 o'clock, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if that might be the high of the day. We don't know because there are waves of this coming in. But when you see some of these, when you see, so UVXY is trading at 18.67 down a dollar 14. Um, if we were speak, speaking about this as a potential, if there are going to be lower lows to come, and I suspect there are going to be. So for the person who was asking me, about the UVXY, in your particular instance, since it's really an insurance policy, this is an ideal time because you are now 255 points in the Dow off the low. You are uh, 21 points off the low um, from the open, that is, today. So in this case, I'd say start a very small – you remember, this is insurance. This is not a, a, like a, the trade that you want to – Retire on. This is what is just saving your regular portfolio. And I'd say at this particular point, a small position, and even that should be monitored. Would I add to it? I'd add to it if the Dow, after 2.30 this afternoon, has given back another 100 points. Then I'd say you could just add just a tad. Don't get carried away. It's insurance. Insurance you have to think of very carefully. All right, let's get back to our story. So PLTR, I'm going to finish up the other areas in a moment. They're all very important. Oh, I keep typing it in to my near-term chart. It has to go to right here. Yeah. So Palantir, I said I'd be a little careful. It had acted really well, but I didn't like the fact that it made a peak D with a um, sorry a peak D in the uh, with a Doji candle, then a second chap wave. Uh, this is called right a silent Doji candle when it makes a um, a Doji candle off what's a potential. Uh, turnaround bar, one bar before, one bar after, just says, oh, be careful. That's a confirmation that there's some weakness there. So I just be real careful. So in this particular instance, you've had a very sharp pullback. It's down 31 cents today, 1476. It made a peak F in the weekly chart. It made the dreaded H pattern, a successful one, which started a cup formation. But that daily, the way the dailies pull back says to me, Palantir Technologies Inc. develops data fusion platforms. Ah, I I just be real careful. I think it's going to hit the 13, 13, 21, 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart at some point. Doesn't have to be quick. 1356 is the 200 period moving average in the daily. Here is at 1475. It's got quite a way to go, but I do think that that's the area. So then I hope that helps you for Palantir. And then a question came up about Ford. So Ford Motor Company hits a 25.22 high in January of 2022, comes tumbling down to the nines, and then, you know, like dressed to the nines? Well, this is the opposite. It gets undressed to the nines, and it goes to a peak A, and then a peak A and a B in the monthly chart. It makes the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. Let me draw that in here. Uh, this is the h. to an M pattern, or it could just be called a rectangle, in fact. And what is it doing? 
just like we were looking at whatever it was. What was it? It was TLT. No, no. What did I say? We went to 82. Uh, what stock were we looking at earlier on? Oh, my. Anyway, I can't remember. And uh, we went underneath it. Remember the monthly chart? Well, look at this. The low that was made in Ford back in 2022, uh, in July of 2022 at 9.96. It rallies up to the C15s, comes back, and it tests the 9 at the 10.25. Then it rallies up to the 15 area again, comes back, and where is it right now? 9.74. 9.96 was the low that we were looking at from July of 2022. We're under that in a monthly chart. I. This is tough. Let me tell you. Ford, I think... Um, they, they, the design, I, I, I always follow design a lot. I, I'm beginning to like quite a lot of the Ford products. I think that the, uh, I know my wife, whenever we're on the road, she says, oh, I like that. What is that? And it always turns out to be Ford Thunderbird. Um, so um, one, one guy's or another. So all I can say is that I, I don't want to go one-to-one -to, -one to the downside from the weekly chart and go from the, the 15s down to the 11s, four points, and then four points from the 13 area because, oh, it actually gets there doesn't look quite right to me. Oh, I will do that. So let's go from here down to here. Yeah, whoa, whoa look at this. Uh, one to one to the downside. Yeah, I can't ignore it. It's a possibility. It's, it's a pattern that I follow, but I, I don't follow it exclusively. It's just something, and that just says nine, nine twenties. Could be a test. Oh, it's not a big deal, 50 cents low. But that's not the issue. The issue is if the monthly closes underneath that left side low of, of July of 2022, you have to now get a buy signal in the day. I'm not sure. Maybe you're actually short. I shouldn't have I should have asked you what you are. Um, no. Okay. So in this particular instance, all I can say is this gap down and follow through to the downside. This is not good news. Uh, you know, Oh, I meant to do that. I'll do that during the break. I'll just, oh, in fact, where's my cell phone right now? I'll say, um, let me just ask this. Uh, okay, we've, we've got a break coming up. How many motor companies were there in the Boston area in 1930s? Just a moment, and here we go. Well, let's see, the Dow is uh, up 253. Just a moment is more than just the issue. It's so quick. All right, it'll be back. I'd like to find out. That there's something going on here that uh, we have to talk about, and I'll be back with it in a moment about Ford Motor Company. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So that's an interesting thing. I had not seen this before. It was different. I years ago I looked at this and it said there were automakers all over the show. Uh, they didn't. They a lot. A lot of them failed. But here it says the number of active automobile manufacturers dropped from 253 in 1908 to only 44 in 1929, with about 80% of the industry's output accounted for by Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler formed by Maxwell in 1925 by Walter P. What was his name? Maxwell. So um, that's interesting because I know that we even had here in the Boston area, we had automobile ma manufacturers. Um, maybe they're talking about, well, I'm going to go with that. So what I was thinking is that in this particular area, now with electric cars, and for the first time we're really talking about design, now the actual designs are becoming really competitive. You can actually start to see a little bit of a difference in the styles, not that much, but more than there had been before. So I think this is an era that's going to be coming up if it all works out, if we can get through the next year or so, um, where there is a great demand for electric vehicles because of design and other things, not so much of practicality. And that practicality will come into place. I mean, they, you know, human beings' creativity is enormous. They will figure out a way to get a much, much quicker uh, injection of electricity into the cars, in a, in not maybe the same as gas, where it takes you seven minutes or something to fill up, but maybe 10, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll have to see. In the meantime, Ford is as as a chart. Not good. look at General Motors. General Motors up all overlap here. You've got the daily chart. Look at this. Lower lows and lower highs. Low lows and this, yes, you want to want the downside. It broke its arch formation, the Chapter Wave um, H pattern, uh, at a peak A and a B, at a B minus, and it took out the left side low. This pattern is ominous. It just it. I'm very nervous about what's going on. And look at the XLF. So what the question wasn't about the XLF. But if you don't have the financials, and this is where gold really would start to uh, accelerate to the upside, if there is some kind of a financial, oh, oh, oh. If you're looking at this um, on the arch on the right, you've got yourself the H pattern from an A coming down you don't want to see the XLF start to trade in the monthly chart under 29.59, and here it is at 31.68, barely up today, 22 cents. So that's the reason why I said we are short, we're going to stay short. Um, and yes, we have long, but they're in certain areas. Now, the question, Basil, they used to make as of course at Assembly Row in Somerville. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as a, uh, when my son was a kid, I took him to the four, to the General Motors uh, company in Framingham. It was fantastic. You go and you see nothing. And then as you walked around, you saw the chassis and the wheels and they put the engine and then they put the, the, uh, the, the, um, the car itself 
on top of the base. Uh, and then finally they drive it off the lot. It is the, uh, fantastic. And then the, I think I took my daughter, but it was completely different at that point and it changed and then it was gone. Yeah, it's an ex exciting thing to see. I don't know what they do today. I can imagine if Tesla or whatever, the uh, automation is, uh, oh, talk about automation, I'll go to the end in a moment. But in the meantime, question came in and I want to get to these questions about Myrna. Myrna, I always say Myrna because I had a Myrna in my class at school. Um, Myrna. Uh, MRNA is Moderna, Biotech, COVID. And the question is, do you see any potential support in Myrna earnings on the 2nd of November? Now, this is interesting because when a stock does this, even if there's absolutely fantastic earnings, the V-shaped pattern of a low says that it could be fabulous, except what it does, it just it just goes back to where it was a few days ago. So look, let's just say it's trading at 7259 right now. On the second, the second will be on Thursday. So what's the second? Thursday uh, is Thursday. By Thursday, look, the rally today is up 63 cents at 7254 off the high of the day. Um, anything can happen, but at this particular point, Let's just say, let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. It actually closes by Wednesday in some optimistic way at 76. You got the nine period moving average of 78.86. You got the, the black 14 period moving average of 82.91. What happens in a situation like this is that you could have a bounce, but to get the pink to change to black, to start to go to green, uh, to, to cross, you're going to have to see 88 to 89. And I just don't see that. If you're looking at the biotech sector as a, as a sector, look at this. It looks just like Myrna. So all I can say is that um, I it doesn't matter if it has great earnings. I would say by November the 15th, November the 17th, somewhere in that period, if uh, Moderna is trading under 68 or 67, just in the 60s, <sighs> It's taken every opportunity to rally and hasn't been able to do that. If it is traveling, I mean sideways to higher highs and higher lows, and now it's at 82 and then 84, then I would say to you for the first time, the stock is saying we've overcome a tremendous amount of uh, acti negative activity since the, the August high of 2021, the, the, the high that was the basically the... Um, it didn't coincide exactly, but we can call it the the COVID high at 497, and now it could, now the other products are coming in line. Wow, that's a big ask. So, um, you know, it, it's a tough one. Now, as I said about six months ago, and then eight months ago, and then three months ago, if you really see, if you're doing your homework and you say, I, you know, it's a biotech stock, you've got to hold these for a long-term position. I would say I want to see now I want to see a reversal of the trend in the weekly chart so that by November, late November, early December, you're actually seeing an uptrend where it's making higher highs and higher lows on a weekly basis, even if it's just gone to a peak A and then stalled and yet not even gone to a B, but well off, well off the 83 level, which I would say is an absolute minimum for it to rally for me to say, hey, something's happening. Gosh, I hope that was a long-winded way of saying I, I wouldn't rely on one news event. Um, yes. Uh, Basil, have you seen WBA? I think I've done all the other ones that I wrote down. So let me just do this, WBA. WBA. Yeah, I've spoken about this, spoke about it in my uh, the newsletter. We don't have it. I've been watching it very closely. Walgreen. Walgreen Boots Alliance Inc., drug stores, etc. Um, I need to see evidence. So this is like the GE. At some point, GE was uh, just unbelievably bad. It just had, I mean, from the time Welsh left, and then you got whatever his name is. We did everything wrong. I mean, if you want to know, I, I don't know if they do that in the business school. Probably Emil uh, has some influence there because he, he came to Massachusetts for a while. Um, with another company, and they got taken out, and he still made a bundle there. But um, I believe, but email, um, everything wrong. When the energy energy uh, was on its way down, he put energy in. Uh, 
engine, the engineering part, the um, the um, en engines for the Boeing, whatever it is that would make a high and then go down to a low, he was in it at the high and it went down to a low. So Walgreens has a new CEO. I'll talk about what You might there. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, so there's a little bit of a balance up to the 200 pre moving average on the one minute chart. It's over the 200 pre moving average, five minute chart, and 10 minute chart. So this is the now comes so 1020 is where we saw we saw the pullback to the base level of the 4150, 50, uh, 50, say 5 to 54, 56 to 54 area in the uh, e mini going to the 1020 time. Now we've got a whole New bunch of people coming in. Uh, they're not shorting. They're not going long. They're going to their own positions that they've been waiting for, and they're doing something. Whether it's to short, or whether it's to go long, we'll find out. Because by 12:20 to 1:15 this afternoon, if the Dow is still holding really well above 230 points, it's at 283 right now, and the S&P is up uh, above 22 points. Then you get your later afternoon people coming in, and they're now preparing for tomorrow, and that's going to be very important. But we are so oversold on a particular, on, a, on just on a purely technical basis, on balance volume, etc., that you can see this last another day or two. I don't, I, I, I'm not saying this is the perfect time to to reinstitute shorts or just even even new longs. If you missed out the, the big move up, I'd have to wait. 
for any move, even if you want a short-term trade. So with that said, uh, this uh, I still see lower lows and lower highs to come over the next week or so. Well, now, let's get back to um, the next couple of days, in fact, are very important. Can we form a base? It would have been great. What happens if today we, we close down even 30 points and then tomorrow's the ugly day? That, that's kind of what I would like to see, to see a washout that can give us a really good rally for a couple of weeks. Maybe even two weeks. Oh, what is that the end of the show? Good grief. What did I say I was still going to do? Oh, uh, Walgreens. So nothing to do with Walgreens just yet, because I do think that uh, we're looking at, there's a new CEO. That's why I brought up GE. New CEO. Let's see what he can do. And most importantly, um, have a great day. <laughs> great to see you guys. Thank you for Steve and all the rest of the participants, the hosts, and I'll be back tomorrow.